Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and today I'm going to make a witcher. Now before I can start bulking up young Vesemir, I need to give him a skeleton. Now, normally I'd use a thinner gauge wire, but due to the excessive amounts of gene mutating tonic he's imbibed, these armatures are going to be significantly thicker than your average wire. Then the next few steps are pretty straightforward. First step is to get my pose correct, and then I need to build up an aluminium base, and then I'm going behind the scenes to get the various clays I'll need for the rest of the work. I'll lay down a thin layer of cause clay first just to give the armature a bit more rigidity before covering it again in another thin layer of Super Sculpey. And then I'm finally ready to properly start sculpting. He's going to be fully clothed, which is oddly kind of a first for me. I seem to have sculpted myself into a corner of half-naked, overly muscular dudes. But anyways, because he's fully clothed, I don't need to worry about any muscular definition, but I'm still going to bulk up his body using the exact same process as if I were adding the muscle, since this will help me to ensure that my proportions are correct. It has been a while since I've made anything properly proportioned, so I can really use all the help that I can get. And once I've got my various blobs of muscle in place, I'll start blending them all together until I've got a nice, smooth, vaguely muscular looking body. Now I want to get this in before all the comments letting me know he's got the wrong pants on. I usually start a new sculpture on the day after I release the video, so on Saturday. Now the Nightmare of the Wolf movie didn't come out until Monday, so I didn't actually have any good reference photos to work off of, so I just kind of had to wing it and make an appropriate pair of Witcher pants without any reference. I considered making old Vesemir's pants, but then that led down a canonical line that would imply he's been wearing the same pair of pants for 70 years or something like that. So to get around that issue, I decided to go with a pair of Kaer Morin pants. Kind of like the starting pants Geralt wears in The Witcher 3. I figured that this is sort of a Witcher uniform, rather than a pair of pants specific to Geralt, so it makes sense that a young Vesemir would have something similar. And yes, that is how much thought I put into making a pair of pants. Additionally and unintentionally, it provides a bit more color. Now, Vesemir's outfit in the movie is kind of one note. It's blue with some blue and a little bit of dark blue and a little bit more darker blue and a little bit of gray. Now, I realize that the Witchers aren't the most stylish group around, but I thought this added a little bit of that je ne sais quoi that only brown leather pants can provide. A textured fabric cloth will help provide texture to my leather pants, and little wormy dealies will work wonders as folds and creases around the knees. And then of course the finishing touches on his trousers are the addition of a padded leather banana hammock. Then I'm ready to get cracking on the head. I'll start with a blob of clay on a wire, then mold that into a mostly humanoid shape. I'll then mark out the center line as well as the eyes, nose, and mouth levels before cutting away some of the clay to give me a better shape. Then I'll carve out the eye sockets before adding a couple blobs of clay to make the nose. And then once that's blended into the cheeks, I'll poke divots into the eye sockets to give me a place to plop some eyeballs down. Then some tiny wormy deedlies will get added in above and below to act as the eyelids as well as to strengthen the cheekbones. Now I don't know why, but I like to sculpt angry yelling people, so I'll point the brows down to help facilitate that angry yelling vibe before marking out where the mouth will be. Then once I've pushed clay around to give the mouth a bit of shape, I'll add some ears. I'll start with a semicircle of clay, then line the tops up with the center of my eyes before adding the little scoops and dips. Then we can get started on what I think might be the worst haircut facial hair combo that I've seen in a long, long time. At this point I've baked the head so I don't need to worry about deforming it while I add the hair which is made of cause clay since it's sticky and will easily adhere to the cured clay without the need for glue. So once I've got the beard straps that will hold his hair in place, I can give this 70 year old grizzled veteran monster hunter the exact same look as the guy that married Posh Spice. Then all I need to do is drill a hole in the bottom and I can stick it onto the body. Then I can blend the neck into the neck and get to work on the rest of the outfit starting with the Witcher kilt. This is also going to be made out of cosplay since it'll be thin and flimsy so I need something that can hold up to being constantly knocked and dropped. Scopey is easier to blend and cut sharp lines in but cosplay is nice and rubbery when it's cured, so it's ideal for things like skirts, capes, and fingers. 
Now to match his kinda douchey haircut, Vesemir has not one, but two popped collars that I'll need to account for. The first is his skin-tight tactical turtleneck, the tactile neck, and the second is the metal collar on his armor. I've also added the tactical shoulder pads on his tactical turtleneck, but I'll end up covering these up to the point where they're completely invisible, so it's probably a step that can be skipped. I've also cut some very thin lines to connect the seam of his skirt with his shirt to make it easier to identify the different fabrics once it's all been painted. Then I can smoosh out a line around his waist so I have space to fit his belt, which is just a thin strip of clay that gets wrapped all the way around. At this point, I decided against any type of lighting, but I still wanted his hand to be outcast as if he's tossing Witcher gang signs, so his right hand is going to be splayed open. Now, maybe in the future, I can make a set of signs that can be swapped out, but for the time being, it's just going to be an open palm. I don't know, maybe he can be tossing a coin. Come here. A thin strip of clay gets draped over the forearm and blended into the rest of the body and some little wormy dealies will help to add wrinkles and folds into the shirt. I like to wear a long sleeve shirt while I do this so that I can extend my arm to see how the folds work in real life. The other hand will be clasping his sword, so I'm going to start by making a hilt out of a little bit of wire and some clay wrapped around it. Then the hand gets sculpted directly on top of the hilt. I've got a thick piece of dowel that I like to keep beside me so I can see how the hand actually wraps around the hilt. It's the same as adding the cloth folds, it's helpful to have something to reference in 3D rather than just trying to guess as to how it would look. And once I'm happy with the shape, I can squish this onto my left arm stub and blend it in using the same process as the other arm. Full disclosure, I don't know what's going on with Vesemir's outfit in this movie. I don't know what his undershirt is, I don't know what makes up the armor plates, I don't know why some things are sticking out and other things are laying flat. Add to that the fact that he's wearing a big heavy cloak for 80% of the movie and the other 20% he's bouncing around in darkness, so it's damn near impossible to figure out what the hell is going on. So I'm kind of making it up as I go along. One thing I do know though is that at some point towards the end he dons a set of metal shoulder pads and the aforementioned popped metal collar. These are held in place with a few leather straps which are in turn held together with some metal rings. A couple of straps run all the way around to his back and then I'm not really sure what happens. Like I said, he's wearing a cape so I don't really know what's going on at the back of his outfit. Fortunately, two can play this game and I'm gonna give him a big old cape so it doesn't really matter what his back looks like since it's gonna be covered. Before that though, I need to give him the quintessential Witcher medallion complete with a teeny tiny wolf logo. I've sculpted this on my professional grade cheese knife before curing it with a heat gun and popping it in place. Then I can make a long worm of clay to wrap around his neck and act as the chain. Then all that's really left to do is add his gauntlets, give them some wrinkles, then add the strips of leather that wrap around said gauntlets before adding more wrinkles between the strips. Now, what's a witcher without his dime bag of tonics? So I'll make a little leather pouch by chopping some clay into a cube, then adding a tiny flap on top and some little buckles, then I can poke some tiny holes in it for the thread before gluing it into place on the belt. I've also made a teeny tiny coin pouch as well as the Witcher grappling hook which is apparently a thing now. Then it's time to make a cape but I need to turn this ball of clay into a sheet of clay. With that sorted I can chop off the sides and cleave out a neck hole and I mean that's kind of it, That's 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 a cape. So all I need to do is fold it and wrinkle it until I've got the flowing cape that I want. And then once I'm happy with the way the folds hang, I'll make a support out of armature wire so it doesn't deform in the oven, and then I can throw it in the oven and let it set in place. Once it's cured and cooled, I'll carefully peel it off the rest of the model. I tried not to press it down too much, but there's a few spots where it's stuck to the underlying clay and I peeled them off as well. Not really an issue, a few of the pieces I can glue back on, while well, the other ones are going to be hidden by the cape anyways. Then all I need to do is add the furry hood at the top by smushing a couple big wormy dealies around the edge before carving some fur texture in using my tools. Now to make this sword, I have laid out a long strip of clay. However, any master swordsmith will tell you that folded steel is best, so I'll fold the clay before cutting the shape out. Then once it's been baked, I can refine that shape with a little sanding. 
Finally, the cross guard gets glued in place and then the blade can get glued on top before finally moving on to the painting. Now, normally I start with a white primer, but today I'm gonna go goth and rock the black primer. I'll do the majority of the painting using a brush, but I do wanna do some of the base coats using my airbrush. Of course, safety first, so I'll crack out the booth and make sure I'm wearing all the necessary safety equipment. I don't know much about much, but I'm pretty sure breathing vaporized paint particles is a bad idea. Now, since I've made the cape removable, it's exceptionally easy to give it a dusting of green paint, and with a black primer, I only need the lightest fairy's fart worth of paint to keep it dark and brooding. Then I can do some of the blue base coats of Vesemir's jacket as well, starting with a bright blue before darkening some of the sections with a slightly darker blue. And once I've got his cone of shame in place, I can put down a white guy's skin tone. Doing this with the airbrush will save me having to faff about with a paintbrush later. Then once I've got the big colors blocked in, I can start refining the coloring with my brush. I lack the skill with an airbrush to really keep the paint where I want it to go, and I lack the patience to properly tape things off to make that possible. Instead, I'd rather get in the colors place than come back and touch up any problem spots with a paintbrush. Now, I had considered painting his pants blue or black to keep the aesthetic, but damn it, I want to make some leather pants. Now, to do this, I'll start with an almost orange base coat before painting over the entire thing with a sloppy dark brown. Then I'll highlight the knee pads with a slightly lighter brown before painting the boots with a dark, almost black brown. Then, to finally give the leather a distressed look, I'll dry brush over everything with a dark beige. And the rest of the leather sections will get painted with that same dark brown before his hair gets painted with that same dark brown. And once his eyes have been painted white, I'll add a black iris which will get painted yellow until only the edge of the black is visible, and then another tiny dot of black will act as his pupil. Then all that's left to do is add some highlights to make the straps and metals stand out. All the leather straps will get a little bit of lighter brown edge highlighting, the boot straps will get a lighter coat, and then all of the buckles, rings, and the medallion will get a coat of silver paint. Finally, and I do mean finally this time, the fur of the cape gets a base coat of light grey before a wet blend of brownish grey and a dry brushing of bone white. Then we can reattach the cape and get started on the base. Now for a base I wanted to do something cold and dreary in honor of cold and dreary Kaer Morin, so I figured a nice cold tundra path would be perfect. Now I get some comments along the lines of, I'd love to do that, but I don't have the materials to do that, and I understand, but I want you to see just how simple it can be to make a pretty good looking tundra base with just a few ingredients everyone has in their house. So all you'll really need is some foam, some more foam, some rocks, some fake snow, some fake grass, a little more fake grass, some little rocks, some more little rocks, some slightly larger little rocks, some scatter flock, some glue, more glue, a static grass applicator, and some isopropyl alcohol. I also like to cover all my bases in a fake dirt, which is one part glue, one part sand, one part modeling paste, and one part paint. So it helps if you have all those things too. Spread this all over the base until you have a somewhat cursed looking chocolate lemon cake, then start sticking bits and pieces in until you're happy. Me, I think happiness was invented by Hallmark to make us buy birthday cards, so I try never to be happy, so I'll go until I'm a healthy amount of apathetic. And once the base is dried, I'll prime and paint the bricks grey before working my way through a number of washes, starting with a black, then a grey, then some brown, a little ochre, then a bit more black, before dry brushing with bone white, then a very light dusting of bright white. My dirt isn't quite winter sad enough, so I'm gonna paint it with a slightly darker brown before dry brushing the surface with some white to give the impression of frost. And because the closest I come to happiness is the application of static grass, I'm gonna paint out some thinned out PVA glue randomly around the base before adding a layer of two millimeter dead grass. And then to liven things up, I'll add some little tufts of longer grass, some yellow scatter flock, little bits of detritus, and some tiny rocks, before covering everything in a healthy coating of fake snow. And to lock everything in place, a healthy misting of isopropyl alcohol, followed by some thinned out PVA glue. Then all I need to do is paint the base black, stick Vesemir in place, and then uh, move on to the glamour shots.
There you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. Of course, I wouldn't be able to make it without the continued support of the lovely, lovely folk over at Patreon. So a massive thank you to my newest patrons, DB, CMMF, Amanda Severe Bashore, Simon Name, Arthur Baroni, Corgi Overlord, Caleb Coffrey, Jean Loup M, Brody Harris, Deshali Cartagena, Scott Newman, Jenna Schaefer, Jericho, Eric Vaughn, Lee Damon, Danil, Alicia Benitez, Kelly Kiltz, Ann Bondar, and Brit Brit Brit. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, commenting, and creating a thousand unique YouTube profiles with which to rewatch this video over and over. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next week. Cheers.